I was one of those people who did not like Hunt characters. The reason for that being, oh, well, Destruction hits three enemies at a time. Nihility can hit three or more at a time. And Erudition can hit all of them. So why would I settle for someone who can only hit one? That was my very, very, very early reasoning for why I didn't like Hunt characters. But now I realize, looking at the data bank, we barely had any Hunt characters to begin with. We, we came out the gate with Yang Ching, Zila, I believe Su Shang, and Don Hong. So for me personally, none of those characters really struck out to me as like, oh, I gotta get them, right? Or I gotta build them, play them. Su Shang was fun, but I still wasn't really sold. But it wasn't until Dr. Ratio, which is a free character, by the way, at the time, until I started to kind of change my outlook on Hunt. And I still didn't necessarily love the idea until Fei Zhao. Fei Zhao has changed my perspective on Hunt characters for the foreseeable future. And I don't just mean the damage either, because trust me, look at my build, it's nothing impressive, okay? I'm struggling over here. Using a free-to-play light cone, like, you know, not even S5. The point about Fei Zhao I want to get at is the way she plays is fun for a Hunt character. For me. And before, yeah, the damage was there, sure, but this is fun. When it all comes together, when the whole team works together and it, it all makes sense, that's when things get fun. And her ultimate is split into two, if you can get it that way, right? If you have 12 of your stacks, you can do two bursts. And it's very similar to, as I'm sure you guys know about Acheron, she doesn't actually have energy like a normal character does. And what that does is it allows for a hunt character, somebody who can only hit one target, to hit multiple targets, one after another, in rapid succession. And that is exactly what makes up for only being single target. There you go. That was the only thing, right? If you're going to be a single target only character, you need to make sure your damage backs that up so you can like literally take somebody out and then move over to the next one, right? We've been over this kind of thing many times in many different games, but that is the thing about hunt characters. If you're going to be a single target character, you got to be able to dismiss characters quickly and move on to the next one. And with the ultimate design the way it is, that's what she can do. And even if it's just one target, you can alt on them twice, you know? So if you have an insane phase out, you're doing like 500k upwards, you know, if you're looking like me, maybe like you're lucky to hit 250k. <laughs> but anyways, my point is when everything comes together, this is just so fun. Whether it be her premium team, which will be like Topaz, Aventurine, and of course Robin. Or if it's going to be, you know, something like uh, March 7th with the Hunt version, it should be down here. Or if it's Moza as well, like you have options, you know, and I've even seen, I believe it's a uh, Wyatt Sky. If you ever seen his videos and his channel, he's an amazing creator for Star Rail. He's been trying a uh, super break phase out. So even that's been working pretty well. And what I just mentioned earlier sounded a lot like Zila, right? But the difference is Zila just wants buff, 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 and then she'll do all the work. The thing about phase out is she does a good amount of damage, but her team, like I said, you want your team attacking too to give her the stack that she needs. So regardless of whatever team comp you play, you kind of want those attacks to happen. So the whole team ends up contributing to the damage and not just harmony characters, but other attackers as well. So it's, it's more about the team as a whole that works with Fei Zhao more than just specifically Fei Zhao by herself. As for Dr. Ratio, I have nothing bad to say about this gentleman. He's kind of in a similar fashion where you want someone else to hit the enemy because they have, you know, the 100% over their head. And, then you you know, of course, you target them if somebody else hits them. But he doesn't really want somebody else to attack to inherently buff him. You know what I mean? So very clean character as well. But he's very skill point heavy. Very skill point heavy, it seems. I like playing him with Sparkle for that. But... It's different from Fei Zhao, is what I'm trying to say. You know, he, he's good and he is a little similar, but 
and he was free, so <laughs> can't really complain at all about that one. Now, this is a whole different play style from what we were talking about earlier, but just want to kind of touch on Boot Hill for a second. He's so good. He's so good, and I'm so mad I didn't have enough to pull him. All the Firefly hype got to my head, and I got her instead. But anywho, my point is, this guy is the definition of single target damage. If there was anyone in this entire game who you wanted to annihilate a target, it's Boot Hill. You know, and I had a lot of appreciation for him. Like I said, the deal with him was I just didn't have enough pulls because of Firefly's light cone and Firefly herself. So that was the only reason why I didn't get Boot Hill. But yeah, he's great. He's just a killer. <laughs> now for you, if you're very used to Boot Hill's numbers and Boot Hill's damage, she may kind of feel underwhelming to you. I'm not going to lie. And also, if you don't have the composition, like Robin and Aventurine and Topaz or March 7th, Moza, then you're kind of missing out on the, the fun of her composition, right? So then I wouldn't even recommend it anyways, if you don't have, if you don't have those or you don't plan to get them. And it kind of makes me feel kind of way that they're putting out, you know, specifically Robin here again so fast. And Topaz. Don't forget, Topaz on the second half of this banner. So, I mean, they're setting up the team for you. And I guarantee you, Adventuring is in 2.6 with Rappa. I guarantee you. Guarantee it. Maybe even Dr. Ratio as well. So, they're definitely trying to set this up as like a last hoorah for follow-up. I, I don't know why or what's happening. Maybe it's alluding to what's to come in like later patches. Because I don't even know who can use this. Like, this is clearly a future thing. This is like summons coming to the game. It literally says when a target is summoned. So I don't know who can do that yet. I don't know if Lightning Lord counts as a summon or a Topaz. I don't know what this means. It just seems like it's for the future. So maybe there's like a follow-up and a summon at the same time. I don't know. But I feel like they're cooking something and all this is happening for a specific reason. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, and I do want to say... I did mention that, oh, your addition can hit all the targets and destruction can hit three. I don't actually like the your addition characters either. But the only reason why is just because I don't like the actual characters, not what they do. I don't really care for Jinyuan, never have, never cared for Argenti, uh, didn't like Jade either, and just now got my very first Himiko. So, and I have all the four stars built. So, the only character who I actually do like besides the four stars and, and Himiko, is going to be the upcoming Rappa. So I like her design. I like it a lot. She looks awesome. I'm getting her at all costs. But just want to clear that up too. I didn't like the Erudition characters, but just for the characters, not for what they do. Now witness my awful builds, my terrible account, and my extremely underinvested characters with god-awful crit ratios. We are going to go through MOC real quick to show Fei Zhao off with her premium team. And show how good she actually does. And I know this MOC buff is pretty freaking good. But the real test will be in a couple of days. We'll come back and do Apocalyptic Shadow. So here's the run. I did nothing special. Just attacked one enemy at a time. Until they died. What's cool too is the weakness doesn't really matter. In this case I know it's all win weakness. So it's in her favor. But I guess Adventurine or anybody else. You know. If it don't have win weakness, it's actually pretty good still. So, you don't need to have the win weakness for her to perform well. No matter what weakness it is, she'll, she'll do well. And you'll see what happens here is... With Robin's Light Cone, she gets energy when people do follow-up attacks. So, we're getting Robin's energy up just by doing all these follow-ups. And she's getting so much of it back that... There's never a dull moment where she doesn't have her ult. You, you gotta do at least one skill, but that's about it. So we wait until Tobas' turn is over. Pop Robin. Right? And you can see we are just going hard on this one guy here. Use her ulti. And we use the one where the weakness is already broken. And once that guy's down, I'll hit the next one. So, unfortunately, like I said, we did miss the guy on the left, but... Essentially, we're hitting about 
30k even with Robin. So I told you how bad the build is. <laughs> so yeah, this guy's still alive, unfortunately. But he dies there. On the Kafka. I focus Kafka first because I don't like the CCing. And uh you know, kinda ended up wrecking out because the wind weakness and imaginary. And also physical too, all three of them. Pop Topaz. Kinda thought that I was Topaz there, but I wasn't. The dice have been cast. Or maybe. So you can see Kafka's health is just already at halfway. One Robin ult, or one Robin skill. I'm right her ult again. We're singing. And specifically, I have Aventurine right in the middle, so he can get hit most of the time. Which really helps. You can see we didn't crit the first hit there, or that hit either. <laughs> This is 68 crit rate, I believe. And Kafka's gone. We're at 40. And like I said, the MOC buff is a big help. I'm gonna miss this when it's gone. Gonna miss it when it's gone. This guy's just getting annihilated. Over and over and over again. And we finish him off. He had like one health anyways, but... Uh, yeah, there you go. 300k. So with Robin, that was two turns, two cycles. But we will show Adventure in as well, just to get a better idea of what it looks like when you don't have the Wind Weakness or Robin. Then here's the Adventure run with Sparkle instead of Robin. It didn't go too well, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, Firefly in the first side took me three turns, so I had 27 turns left going into this. And I took at least two turns in the first side of this. But I just want to skip ahead to Adventuring himself. So we finish off this lad, and we get to Adventuring. His stupid mini games, man. Like, that's what really kills it, you know? But here it is. So. Some mistakes were made here, for sure. But we tried to make sure we did our alt on Phasia once all the buffs were up. But he's just an annoying boss with the RNG, you know? And we barely hit our crits with Phasia. The annoying thing about Aventurian is that if you do lose his minigame, he just does it again so quickly. And your characters are still CC'd. So you can't even, like, wake back up to do the minigame again. Like, it doesn't give you a break. But we're whittling them down, you know? Obviously, without Robin, we don't have the cheating advantage of getting more turns in a single turn. So whatever, whatever we do is whatever we do. It's real time. Just because I always see Robin with, with the, uh, Faye Zhao and I wanted to kind of show somebody else with her. This is more of a realistic view of a free-to-play Faye Zhao with the right team. Well, at least two follow-up characters. These are all at the end here. Like I said, you can see we're doing like, you know, 150k with an ulti. It's very uh, underwhelming for my my build. So hopefully yours is much better. Because um, I'm at the bottom of the barrel here, so. <laughs> but it's good. It's, it's good to see how low we can go. And still get through. It is a full 5-star team, though, to be fair, so that, that is worth mentioning. But it's a very low-invested 5-star team. 200k. So far, we're avoiding the minigames until right about after Sparkle. 
But it's going by pretty quick, you can see. It's gonna take us at least like two turns to get through this. Two and a half. So here's the first one. Topaz gets a two. Aventurine with a two. I try and pop the birds just to see if I can maybe finesse some more points. Match them. And then, there you go. Topaz gets four, so both of her hits got two. Sparkle gets four. And Phasia, I kind of freak out, get a one, pop the burst to maybe try and get like a six or a seven. Victory is not inevitable, we get a four. So in this instance, we lose all three besides uh, Aventurine. And what happens here is Phage out and Topaz are out, and he freaking does the game again. And it's just like, bro. He does the game again, and they haven't even gotten up yet. So I'm just like, what the heck, man? Like, <laughs> give me a break. Show me what you can do. And unfortunately, the memory imprint doesn't count for anybody, so. I but you can see we have him dead. It's just Victory. getting to the mini game is literally advancing the time. So I got lucky there. Phage out. If it's timed right, you should be able to get the phage out points over because she'll do the follow-up, but lose Sparkle in our Penicone cast. And in here, we just finish off with phage out because we have all, all 12 hits ready. So, just an annoying guy and annoying mechanics for uh, Tenso Hearts venturing. So, and like I said, for you, this will look a lot better. Even if you don't have Topaz, even if you're using Moza or March 7th, it'll probably look better for you. So I finished 22 cycles. Like I said, it took me three with Firefly in the first one. So we started the second half of 22, or with, sorry, with uh, 27 cycles. That's like the bottom line kind of builds <laughs> for these characters. Uh, 68 over 160 on Phage Owl, 126 speed, 3000 attack. Uh, we're using Cruising in the Cellar C at S1. Uh, I, I believe you can actually buy this in Herda's shop to get S5 if you want. Uh, traces are maxed out. Relics could be something better, a lot better. But, you know, we're trying. We are trying. You know, double crit, but didn't really roll double crit. Don't have a, I have a win one, I do. But I kind of need the crit rate, because if I don't have the crit rate, then I'm just not never going to crit. Uh, but yeah, it would be better to have a wind. So it's all the right sets, it's just the sets are just not great. So definitely want wind damage there for sure. No Eidolons at all. Uh, Topaz, we are not even proccing Inert Stiletto. <laughs> so it's pretty bad. Uh, 141 speed. Uh, 41 over 171. Sword play at S5. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Traces, uh, 9. So I went away from the track of Destiny. New follow-up set. Like I said, uh, not great pieces. And we aren't even proccing Stiletto either. Because we don't have enough crit rate. We need at least 50%. So... It's pretty yikes. And once again, no Eidolons. Uh, you Sparkle. Sparkle's pretty good. Nothing too crazy here. Just, you know, the Light Cone. Uh, everything's maxed out here. Speed. Full speed set. And the Effect Res set for more crit damage. No Eidolons. Aventurine. Listen, don't roast me, okay? Don't roast me. I was trying to build him like a hybrid DPS character. I didn't even finish this either. It's at 8, 8, 9. I was trying to build him as a hybrid DPS character and defensive at the same time. I tried two-piece, two-piece. I tried full four-piece of this set. It's a mess, okay? He's also not proccing in a stiletto either. But 
there's just been too many characters to build and I haven't gone back to fix them yet. So <laughs> it's pretty freaking bad. But yeah, the whole point is to kind of show you how bad a build can be uh, and, and still clear it. So, and Robin, who used her in the first half, uh, pretty simple here, just 4,000 attack, her actual light cone, max traces besides the basic attack, uh, just all attack stuff here, you know, two-piece prisoner, two-piece musketeer, and I don't know if these actually stack if two people have it in the same team, I hope it does, but yeah, broken keel on her as well, and once again, no idols, so... You can see, just because we have the characters doesn't necessarily mean we have the investment in them. No Eidolons across the board at all. And, uh, yeah, and a couple light cones here and there. So I really struggle busting it, just trying to get through, but it works. But all in all, the whole point was just to say that Fei Zhao has changed my outlook on hunt characters. And going forward, I'll be keeping a, a closer eye on upcoming hunt characters and see... See what, see what they're cooking, because she really changed my outlook on it, and I like the hunt characters now, so thanks to her. But fun character, cool character, nothing like absolutely game-breaking, but definitely really, really cool character. And the constant follow-ups, and regardless of the, the weakness type as well, it's just fun. So that'll be all for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.